to another episode of Bourbon and Data Breaches, where we cover five of the most interesting data breaches from this last week and one of our favorite bourbons. I'm Steve. Michael. Debbie. Frank. Howdy, I'm Shu. Great. Well, Debbie, what happened this week? Okay, guys. So we're going to start off this uh, CNB today with the Costa Rica news. So as we know, two weeks ago, Hi, um, <laughs> was able to breach uh, Costa, the Costa Rica government, and they were like, we're going to overthrow the government. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? I didn't even uh, I, I want to get to what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, it says that Costa Rica would be pawn and Conti ransomware groups bid to rebrand evade sanctions. Um, <clears throat> their National Health Service was hacked sometime earlier uh, by Hive, and then the intrusion comes just weeks after the Costa Rica president, Rodrigo Chavez, declared a state of emergency. Um, because of COVID. So, uh, not funny. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. It's coming out of Costa Rica, too. And uh, it turns out that they have hijacked the printers. <laughs> And uh, they've started churning copies of the high ransomware note this morning, as well as this garbage. Uh, what do you guys have to say about this? Well, okay, what's what's funny? Like, I often understand what ransomware things do to the to the extent that uh, it's it's weird, but I understand it as a tactic. This is the first time they've ever done something where, like, if I took over somebody's printer and I was mad, <laughs> this is what I would do. And so you, you have to wonder which part of Conti this is and what uh -huh. and what they're doing, because their promise was to overthrow the government. And it seems that their plan is to drain the entire country of toner. That's true. I, I mean, it worked for the French, right? You take over the printing presses and before you know it, you, you have a revolution on your hands. So it could work. Uh, I have a question for Frank. Frank, how many uh, toner cartridges would you have to get through with the Argentinian government before you ever throw it? <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm qualified to answer that. Um, rough estimate. Also, I, I don't want problems with the government. So uh, my, my only concern here is uh, why didn't they uh, print uh, well, I probably shouldn't say this, but I haven't seen uh, any dick pics <laughs> printed in, in all this mess. I'm teaching them to commit crime, Frank. <laughs> right, wait. So, como se dice? The photo de la. Yeah. Photo de huevos. Photo chota. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's yeah. Right. That's right. That's right. A prior episode. That's yes. right. That's right. Um, All right, we found our cold open already. <laughs> 30 seconds in. <laughs> well, maybe they want to take over the government, but not like mentally traumatize everyone. I'll think about it. I don't know how, but yeah. Sorry about okay, Frank, the last episode, you said that the moral of the story was don't mess with the Costa Rican government. Yeah, that's true. Oops. We we can only wait and see how uh, which which gang was this? Uh, Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. We can only wait and uh, see how they fall. I mean, I I feel like they're very much messing with the Costa Rican government. They're not taking your advice to heart. Yeah. Frank. Probably. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> This is which was the the other one was it Conti uh, that hacked uh, the Costa Rican government? Hi. Uh, oh, this is Hi, but but. Sorry, uh, I, I've uh, got. I assume everything's Conti these days. So. <laughs> but Conti is no more. Uh, so I don't allegedly. know. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. Yeah, we all get what that's about now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you'll see Conti 2.0 show up in a week. Right. I don't want to alarm uh, the Costa Ricans, but it looks like they're being targeted. <laughs> um, this, this could be. I to, I yes. no, listen, if you have the power for that kind of prank, there's much worse stuff <laughs> you can do. 
So you got to wonder why, it, you know, it, it, it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense. I mean, I'm, I'm grateful on behalf of the Costa Rican government that they decided not to pull any more pranks, but this just, it just seems juvenile in a way that I <laughs> disapprove of. Says, says man in horn hat. <laughs> man in horn hat is upset with Hyde and their immaturity. Right. And uh, moving on to story number two. Mm. So <clears throat> this is probably my favorite story. A very sad, unfortunate incident, but uh, this story is Kane's Brands discloses ransomware attack. It's unclear whether company paid the ransom. And uh, it said it, it started experiencing a ransomware attack on May 24th. They've informed law enforcement. But what do you guys have to say about this story? I think their town yeah. held out against ransomware as long as they could, and then they cracked. Now, I see what you did there, Divya, but I won't talk about underwear. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's beneath Frank. It's beneath Frank. I think Haynes got caught with her pants down here. Uh, 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 going for the, go obvious. Yeah, hitting the slow ball shit. Uh. Look, <laughs> hackers, okay. already know, hackers already know my pants size. They know my date of birth. Like if they if they steal my boxers versus briefs, like at this point, what is left? Look, uh, the only reason we're talking about this is because of underwear jokes, so. That's not true. They're, 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 they're a major brand. Yeah. They're a major clothing brand. For sure. Yeah. I thought they handled it very well, and they wanted their victims to feel supported. <laughs> Let's get serious here. There's not much to unravel here, because all we officially know is that I quote, uh, it's unclear what effect the ransomware attack uh, had or continues to have on Haynes Brands. Our company forensic investigation and assessment of the impact of this event is ongoing. Cool. But at this point, I think you must, uh, you must at least uh, know which server was compromised. Right? Well, I, and what I loved about that is a US lawyer getting paid ungodly amounts of money to write that statement. Yeah is getting read by like a semi-drunk Argentinian. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, it, can I consume exactly. all of my lawyers speak that way? <laughs> so good. Because like, yeah, like that was the most bullshit uh, yeah. boilerplate statement they could ever have. Like, That's, that's where I'm going. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, it would be a nice gesture to me to, to let their customers or employees know uh, so they can save a future headache instead of leaving us wondering if they are bringing the proper support and comfort for uh, our intimate piles, let's say. It goes to my original point. I think we need to be honest here. The, the article was very, very light on details, and I'm calling all four of you out. We're only talking about this for underwear jokes. I, the, I, 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 for different. one, would have liked to have been more mature and grown up about this. Uh, I completely I, disagree. I think a major U.S. company that's been around for hundreds of years, maybe, uh, they were breached. They're not, they're not a cyber company. They're not a tech company. Yeah. They're a clothing company. Mm -hmm. And this shows how every business is vulnerable to this type of attack, well, no matter what they make. And there's a great trend at work. Sure, true. may not have paid the ransom. Yeah. Right? And, true. Uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, that's like they did. I mean, I don't know. That's what they're debating right now. If yeah. I, I think we've got two things. I, we, I think we've got a very typical brand that's been broken into and their response was let's throw lawyer speak at people to make this go away. And I think we found that is the wrong answer. I think we found immediate brutal honesty is the correct answer. If Haynes had said, look, hackers broke into server 171 and they stole uh, you know, 200,000 records. We're all like, cool, that's good, right? Like we, we now know what we're dealing with 
but the lawyer speak has got to end. You get out there, you let it all hang out, you tell everybody what happened, and you, you know, and you pay up. You support your customers. Yeah. yeah. You got to hold it together. <laughs> well, I think with that, it's time for a bourbon break. All right. So today's bourbon, we have Evan Williams, 1783 small batch. And to answer your question, no, we've not done this one before. <laughs> we have covered Evan Williams before, but we covered the Evan Williams bottled and bond single barrel, which uh, when we covered it was easy to get. Now that bourbon is incredibly hard to get. So you're welcome, Evan Williams. Uh, so now we're covering the small batch, which as of today is easy to get. We'll, we'll see what That's happens. That's the B&B bump. Yeah, exactly. You're welcome for the free advertising. Uh, a little bit about this. Uh, it is a lower cost bourbon, but it is still a sipping bourbon. Uh, it is a, uh, they say it's aged extra in white oak, which I don't even know what aged extra means, but it is a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, 90 proof, 45% alcohol. And uh, Debbie, what do you know about this bourbon? Okay, so uh, according to Total Wine, this bottle runs for about $16 and uh, it's uh, pretty good for the money, I guess, uh, that's mm -hmm. what he said. So Kentucky made from tr traditional Evan Williams bourbon recipe, buttery to the nose with hints of oak, vanilla, and sweet corn. Rich and smooth with a semi-sweet entry of honey and oak leading to an off dry finish. Uh, also, I went, to, I went to this website and uh, the mash bill is 78% corn, 12% malted barley, 10% rye, and uh, it's 90 proof. And uh, I believe they also mentioned on the nose that it has some charred oak, caramel, and vanilla, and notes of like marshmallow and leather. So what do you have to say about that? <clears throat> yeah, so I think uh, Evan Williams is a large producer, and it's always interesting whenever a large producer produces something that they consider to be small batch or select. Obviously, with Evan Williams single barrel, they were taking some of their best barrels and providing that as a premium brand. And, and that, that went incredibly well. Like, it was a low-cost bourbon, that was a very good sipping bourbon, high quality. Um, and I find the same thing with this Evan Williams 1783 small batch. I think they probably put this out because the single barrel was being bought up so quickly that they wanted to have something similar, but maybe a little bit less restrictive. In terms of a sipping bourbon on the nose, it's, it's very pleasant. It's honey, oak, it's sweet. It's, you know, there's nothing uh, offensive there. It's it's not like heavy on corn. It's uh, for for a fifteen dollar bottle. It's incredibly good for sipping. That you immediately get multiple flavors. This is not just a single flavor bourbon. You know, uh, with this you get oak, you get honey, you get uh, a little bit of um, you, you definitely get a little bit of rice spice to it um, and then a little bit more of, of the weeded flavor. So I, I think for a $15 bottle, something that you could sip and enjoy, but at $15 you could mix this, you could very easily mix this with a cocktail recipe or even just Coke or something, um, not feel bad about it. So I think if you're in the market for uh, a cheaper bourbon that you could sip, or even if you're in the market for just a, just a well bourbon, this is a great go-to. And that's been the bourbon break. Okay, guys, we're going to move on to story number three. And this is a story where uh, it's the title reads goodwill ransomware demands victims donate to charity so the hackers require victims to perform three charitable activities in order to receive the decry uh, the decryption key what do you guys have to say about this sounds like somebody quit conti and it's just on sabbatical 
<laughs> Wasn't this the plot of the Batman? Like the one with with the uh, the Joker, the guy that really died. Like uh, was that the Dark Knight or? Dark Knight, yeah. Dark Knight Returns. I don't even know the titles, but like, wasn't it like, hey, we'll let this train full of people go if someone does a good deed or something I like that? It. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I don't know. It, it, it's weird when hackers hack people and then are like, we'll let you go if you like, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, do three good it's deeds. It's kind of, or it's like weird web 1.0 stuff where you would get a message that slightly disturbed you and then it's like forward this to five people or else chain yep. email dude fun time yeah this Boy, is weird feel old. that made me feel old I, it, was, it was a long time ago <laughs> sorry for me but this is also weird i still get them this is also weird yeah. Yeah. uh this is also weirdly um subversive and potentially will work because the number one way that they find hackers is through the payment right so so uh it's less about about the ransom and it's more about who received the bitcoin and can we track that address can we track when that money comes comes out of the system and so if you hack someone and you don't receive any payment for it uh, you may potentially be less likely to be caught. And so it's like, hey, don't pay me, donate this to charity. Like potentially that hacker is going to be uh, less less found out or have less evidence. In a weird related story, a bunch of new Russian charities just opened. Right. Uh, story number four, nobody's covered it yet. And this is really, really exciting. But uh, cc's.com got hacked and there was data leaked uh, you know, and uh, the company allegedly hacked as reported by LV Ransomware. You heard it here first. I'm I also want to point out that, like, uh, you know, there were a couple of tweets that were going around that cc's.com got hacked. More than 120,000 customers data. Hey, that's me. And uh, this is what one of the files oh, looks like. And, uh, you know, cc's pizza is based in Texas. And uh, what, what do you guys have to say about this story? Because this sounds just ridiculous. So, uh, I hope the best swap is clean this time, Divya. So, so this is this is an important story that, that no one's covered in yeah. depth. LV, the ransomware gang, mm -hmm. not a very well-known gang, hacked mm -hmm. CC's, the unlimited pizza company. So we're gonna have to explain yeah. that to Frank because. CC's entire business model is you pay like 16 bucks and you can eat as much pizza as you want. Like they just keep making pizza and you go to, to the, the, the area, the pizza area buffet. and the buffet, the buffet and you just keep taking different types of pizza and then you eat it and then you go and you take more and you eat it. And this goes on for forever. Okay, so now now I know what, what we're dealing with. Thank right. You. Now, now, very important detail that Steve left out is that it is a very good pizza. Is it the best pizza? No. It is very good pizza. The, that is debatable. You know what, Steve? No. It's pizza and it is unlimited. Fairly good. It's... <laughs> if I gave it a grade, I would say B. Closer to a D. I've never, it. I've never had it too, but I'm very scared to try it. So, so it's unlimited pizza, and uh, they were hacked. And you wouldn't think that like a pizza buffet would be hackable. Like, what are you going to hack there? Uh, and, but evidently, they were hacked, and evidently, CC was keeping data on customers, like yeah. two hundred thousand uh, records. But everybody's doing that just as a standard practice. Like, where do you go to now that doesn't say, do you have a phone number with us? It's like, no, I don't have a phone number with you. I just want some pepperoni and I want to go. Yeah. Why, why did they have like full emails, first and last names? I think coupons or something maybe. No, but still, so, I, I, we've discussed like- So, like, uh, so, like, so, so, no, no, so, so it's like, it's like red- it's, it's like fucking Red Robin. They did that. They had a coupon saying like at the table, enter in your, your information to get like 15% off your order. 
right? Yeah. And you did, and then you go to that screen, and what's your phone number? I'm like, is my phone number worth 15% off Red Robin Burger? I decided no, so I'm not. I think um, I think this story is important because a uh, buffet pizza place is not who you would expect to be leaking your data, and yet that's exactly what happened with LV. And uh, I think it's fascinating because, like, it's CCs, right? It's it's a uh, it's almost in the U.S. critical your unlimited pizza i guarantee that somewhere in this is like military records or army records like you think about like the number of people that are like hey let's go and get unlimited pizza i guarantee some of them are, are like you know they're, they're in basic training they're i mean you think he's, you think he's you think he's joking but there's i'm sure there's a cc's pizza in killeen mm -hmm. well yeah it's a space like yeah. uh, company so for sure yeah. San Antonio, yep, there's plenty of CCs in San Antonio. I do want to point out like, like a credit card breach in 2016 as well. So I think that's just insane that, you know, they would not learn anything from it. And here we are. Well, I mean, if they get breached every six years and T Mobile gets breached every six months, like, what does it really say? Yeah. That's true. That's true. We, I'm we not saying CC's Pizza has better uh, security than Mobile. Yeah, I think one thing that's moved to over 2.4 million pizzas for delivery. That's to actually Costa Rica. That's actually only sixteen dollars if you eat it in the store. So Steve might give CC's a C and I give it a B, but I think we can both agree that it is the core issue here is that like ransomware gangs and hackers, they'll get any data possible. It doesn't matter who it is. They'll get it and they'll, they'll leak it. Well, I wonder if CC's paid ransom because like, what did they lose? Yeah. Like you can still make pizza. You the data they ransomed is not core business data. Like that is, it has yeah. value, yeah. but is it valuable enough that you pay the ransom? Like, I wouldn't think so. Yeah, they've been making pizza, companies have been making pizzas for decades without computer systems. It's not hard. You just have to have enough dough. Uh, and apparently that's really hard to do. Fucking round table pizza of Linwood who like fucking runs out of dough at 7 p.m. every fucking night. Oh my God. Well, you live in like socialist Washington where like dough is distributed. If you have so much demand that you run out of dough at 7 p.m., you're not managing your pizza store correctly. Round table pizza of Linwood, Washington. Story number five, last story of the week. Yes. Last story of the evening. Actually true. Actually true, yes. Um, Pegasus Airlines leaked 6.5 terabytes of data in AWS S3 bucket mess up. And it wasn't even like a big mess up too. It was just that the database was left open in an AWS S3 mm -hmm. bucket. Mm -hmm. um, Pegasus Airlines is a Turkey-based low-cost airline. Turkey, um, yeah. They huh? just recently told the UN they were changing their name back to Turkey. Yeah. Oh. Yes, it's true. I'm going to go Turkey. Anyway, what do you guys have to say about you this? You have story? to call him Ergodan, though. Now. Uh, I mean, it's a Turkish low cost airline. Why do they have six and a half terabytes of yeah. data? Like, what is that? But, like, I'm sorry, but like, Six and a half terabytes is yeah, a, a lot. lot. Yeah. Like, what is what is it? What are they retaining on every flyer? Yeah, apparently, like the article said, it's like a lot of fucking flight data. Like, this is, data? This is serious data here like, that was left on S three. Photos of passengers. Oh yeah, Turks leaving and yeah, see that interesting. You know, like that dude right there, man. I bet. Uh, I bet because it's Amazon, I bet a lot of the data was processed by Mechanical Turks. 
Well, <laughs> this has been. <laughs> oh, fuck. That was not any better than any of the Haynes jokes we made this this week. They were. It was better than the joke that jokes that you were making. Yeah, you know how Haynes got. You know how Haynes got in trouble. Yes. Elastic search. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay, I just want to point out that um, a there's been like uh, a lot uh, like at least in the U.S. the FAA does not take this stuff lightly. Like you even go to the in-flight system, and then by the time you land, you're going to get arrested. A, B, I feel like you guys have withheld S3 stories for the past month. So what, else is there to, what else is there to say? That and I love S3 stories, here. and I'm taking a shot for S3 stories as mandated by tradition. We, we have there's, not withheld there's not. stories. They've just not been interesting. Well, I believe it's not, it's not every data breach shoe. It's the most interesting data breach issue. I will say Divya and Steve and Mike and everyone in Ops office purposely denied me S3 stories. I have not seen any S3. This is a video cast about theft, not people who wander in places, take right. stuff that's not locked down yeah. and walk away with it. <laughs> it's not it's not theft. If you put it on a content distribution channel yeah. and you say distribute it to everyone. Yeah, if you take like your antique furniture and you put it on the curb and then somebody walks away with it, you can't come out and say, dude, I was saving that. It's so not flashing if you walk around your house naked with your windows open. <laughs> It's exactly. not. It's not theft if you leave your house open. Yeah, yeah. That is still very much flashing. That is not flashing. That is not though. That is not. Yeah, I will. I will agree. No, but uh, I do want to point out that there's like towards the end of the article, they're mentioning the possible dangers, and it seems that. <laughs> of them knowing everybody that's come into and out of the country, how and where they left or came in and exactly what seat they sat in? Well, not only that, it's just saying that like uh, they found like sensitive flight data and extra sensitive files using passwords and secret keys that mm -hmm. were on that, uh, that were in that unsecure AWS S3 bucket. Don't worry, yes. they're probably insulted hash. Yeah. To, to, to be clear, a content distribution platform is where you should keep your secret keys. No, that's that's literally like if you put your whole album on a SoundCloud and then you're like, it's piracy, I tell them. Yeah, it's piracy. Yeah. Oh, they actually listen to us. Look at this part. More AWS S3 bucket mess ups. Shoot, I'm sending you. Shoot, there's a whole list of S3 bucket mess ups. This just shows me that you didn't read the story. You know there. what? They're boring. There's literally, there's literally. They're boring and basic. And they are no not. Cares about your S3 bucket. You know, what, what time is it in Texas? There's literally a California company right now doing their Friday wrap up on digital transformation for the next quarter, talking about how they're going to pack an S3 bucket. Right? And I, I just think we should have a moment of silence to acknowledge mm -hmm. that company. RIP. Well, any other last comments, y'all, before we conclude the last episode in this office? S3 is intended to be shared. If you don't want it to be shared, then you should be very paranoid about your permissions. Also, don't walk in front of Steve's house. Yes, <laughs> if you do not want to be flashed. <laughs> look, look, if you're in your house naked and the windows are open, you're not committing a crime. I don't think that's true legally, but I will agree with you that it is true. No. This has been an episode of Bourbon and Data Breaches. If you like everything you saw today, then you're probably Conti or Hive or both. Yes. If you hated everything you saw today, welcome. Yeah. Please argue with them in the comment section. Yeah. Uh, thank you to our sponsor, Evan Williams uh, slash Random Tequila Company. Uh, until next time.